All right, welcome back, everyone. So uh, again, we have our rhythm challenge, and uh, what we have here are four different options. Okay, a normal sinus rhythm, B atrial fibrillation, C multifocal atrial tachycardia, or MAT, and then D is wandering atrial pacemaker, uh, or WAP. All right, so what I want you to do is, again, look at the rhythm strips. Remember, these are two leads. We're looking at the inferior lead, uh, lead two, okay, at positive 60 degrees, and then we have lead V1. Both of us giving good ideas of the P waves, all right, so that should help you there. And this is simply an enlarged portion of that, all right, so if you need that to see some of those small boxes, go ahead and look there. So what I want you to do now is pause the video. What you're doing is trying to identify what rhythm is most likely present here. Again, we're choosing the best answer, okay? So pause the video, take a moment to go through it yourself, and then we'll look at this together. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to choose one of these four answer choices. So let's go through these, all right? So different rhythms here, all right? And there's some things that we want to know of how do we differentiate some of these, all right? So firstly, normal sinus rhythm, okay? Notice that, remember, this is a regular rhythm, meaning that the intervals between different uh, waves or segments are the same, okay? So the interval from, for instance, here's an R wave, and this is an R wave that follows. This is what we call the R to R interval. If that interval is the same, meaning from this one to the one that follows, okay, and if you continued that out, you would have a regular interval or regular rhythm, okay? All right, and what we're going to see already, you can probably already identify. Notice as we measure out all these R to R intervals, notice this one here is longer than the one that precedes it, okay? And we have maybe a shorter one that comes afterwards. And what you're seeing is that they are not the same. Okay, so none of these intervals are the same, and that's what we call an irregular rhythm. Okay, so irregular. So already you can see that normal sinus rhythm is not correct, although you can still have sinus rhythm present and not have a regular rhythm, such as in an AV block if it's variable, but we won't get into that. Okay, so an irregular rhythm we have, and next we have to decide, decide is it regularly irregular or is it irregularly irregular okay and how you would do that is you would again look at the intervals if there is some regularity to those um, intervals then we would call that a regularly irregular rhythm however as you can see here there is no regularity to these intervals they're all different and that's why we call this an irregularly irregular rhythm so it would be this one here okay so that's certainly something you tend not to see in any sinus rhythm and that's why choice a is not correct okay so other things that you would see in sinus rhythm were those you know upright p waves okay in leads that were oriented between 0 and 75 degrees in the frontal plane okay so that would be like one two, sometimes AVF, and three you could see them in, okay, but mainly one and two, all right, so we have lead two here, we can see some P waves present, okay, and they're upright, and then in the horizontal plane, V4 to V6, they tend to be upright too. Remember, in lead V1, in sinus rhythm, you tend to see these biphasic P waves, remember the initial portion representing right atrial depolarization and this latter portion left atrial depolarization okay so that would be in lead v1 okay you can sort of see that here all right some of that up and then that negative deflection all right so that's that all right and then again with sinus rhythm you want those p waves to have similar morphology so notice these are p waves that i'm identifying there's a p wave but it's buried within this t wave here's a p wave one somewhere in here another one again one somewhere there one dis uh, causing um kind of if you compare this is a t wave so if you see this one is also t wave but notice how they look different and that's because you have what we call um, a p on t phenomenon where the p wave is falling on top of the t wave and distorting that t wave okay here's another p wave okay this is a t wave and then you can see the p wave following all right then kind of a combination of the two that p on t phenomenon all right so what we can see here are p waves present and notice that the p waves have a different morphology, 
okay? So P waves present with different morphology, okay? With sinus rhythm, you want constant morphology of the P waves, okay? So that's one thing we don't see here. Another reason why sinus rhythm is not correct, all right? Now, how about atrial fibrillation? We said this is an irregularly irregular rhythm, okay? But what's interesting is that all three of these here listed are irregularly irregular rhythm, okay? So we also mentioned that P waves are present, okay? So not only is it irregularly irregular, you have no P waves present in sinus, or in atrial fibrillation, okay? Because you have that chaotic firing of the atria, and you never really have a uh, true P wave that forms. Okay, you tend to have either fine or coarse um, AFib, and that's based on the baseline. But here we see P waves that are forming, and in that case, because of that, this is not atrial fibrillation. Okay, so despite this being an irregularly irregular rhythm, and atrial fibrillation being the most common of the irregularly irregular rhythms, this is not the choice here. So again. Atrial fibrillation is not correct, all right? So next we're left with multifocal atrial tachycardia or wandering atrial pacemaker, okay? Again, we said these are both irregularly irregular, and that's what I'm putting here with IR, IR, okay? So that's just my way of um, denoting that, so that's so you're aware, all right? Another thing is P waves are present, okay, in both of these, but they have at least three different morphologies, okay? So at least three different P wave morphologies. And what do I mean by morphologies? Well, simply the shape of them. If you look down here, here's lead two, okay? Easier to see, this is a P wave here, okay? There's a P wave coming somewhere buried within there, but then notice here's a P wave, okay? Another one buried somewhere in there. Here's another P wave that follows, okay? But if you look up here, it's probably easier to see this P wave, looks different than this P wave. So that's one, two, okay? And then we have this P wave here, three. They all have different morphologies, okay? Here's another P wave there, and one that follows, all right? So if you were looking at all of these P waves, you would see that they had different morphologies. Here's a P wave down here, okay? There's one showing up down there, so we must have one somewhere in here, okay? Another P wave one occurring somewhere in here. Remember, if one's occurring above, it's also occurring below because that's what we call a temporal relationship of the ECG, okay? Things happening above and below are happening at the same time because time goes left to right, okay, on the ECG. So again, here's our P waves, okay? And you can end up seeing all these having different morphologies and you need at least three to identify one of these uh, C or D as that rhythm, okay? So three different P wave morphologies, both irregular. So what really distinguishes them, okay? Well, um, what distinguishes them is that they have different rates. When you think of multifocal atrial tachycardia, you're thinking of a rate of at least 100 beats per minute, okay? And when you think of wandering atrial pacemaker, this has a ventricular rate of less than 100 beats per minute. Okay, so what we would have to do here is to measure out the rate on this um, the rhythm. All right. Now remember, we said this is an irregular rhythm, so we can we have to. There's one way we can do it, and I would kind of recommend if you don't know how to find the rate, use this rate this way because you can use it for both regular and irregular rhythm. So remember, we have a standard ECG from beginning all the way to the end, okay? So I gave, this is all 10 seconds, all right? So if you multiply 10 seconds by six, 10 times six is 60, 60 seconds is one minute, okay? So what we wanna do is count the number of QRS complexes, okay? We can find the atrial or ventricular rate. Let's use the QRS complexes and find the ventricular rate. We multiply that by six, and then we get the rate in beats per minute, or at least an estimate of it, okay? So let's do that here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, okay? So we have 16, if I counted correctly, okay? And we should know that 16 times six, right, is 96, okay? So we have a rate of 96 beats per minute. All right, so awfully close to that upper range. So 96 beats per minute. 
and I'm sure if you counted the P waves, you may actually have get over 100, okay? And why do I say that? Well, notice that we have a P wave that's occurring here, and then one that's occurring at the end, okay? But this one here at the end it does not have a following QRS complex, so really it would be 17 times six, okay? And that would give you 102 beats per minute. So this actual rate is probably, the atrial rate is closer to 100. Okay, and because of that, that puts you in this category here. So again, atrial, multifocal, atrial tachycardia. So it's best, you can often use the ventricular rate, but when it's so close like that, you wanna make sure not to miss any P waves, okay? So this is a multifocal atrial tachycardia. All right, so the best choice here is C based on that rate. Now, just a few other points. What is actually going on here? Well, if you imagine, you have your heart here, okay, our four chambers. This is the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Now, what you'll notice is that everything in the ventricles down here is happening normally. So once the conduction gets through down to here, everything is the same, meaning our QRS complexes and T waves tend to be normal, okay? But where you see the variation is where the focus or where the pacemaking cells that are firing are taking place, okay? Remember, we said three different P wave morphologies. What that means is three different ectopic foci. So imagine this is one, Here's two and three, okay? They're all firing to that AV node, all right, at, uh, to get there, okay? But the rhythm is originating from three different foci, okay, and likely more. We saw different, more than uh, three different P wave morphologies. But that's why you have the variation P wave morphologies is because it's originating from different places within the atria, okay? Now, because you have different places arising from within the atria, both of these also have varying PR intervals, okay? So varying P wave morphology and varying PR intervals, and that's why you're seeing that irregularly irregular rhythm, okay? Remember, with atrial fibrillation, no P waves, so there is no PR interval. Okay, so these are just some things that you should be aware of and what's happening. So again, what just to display this again, we'll just draw our atria. Okay, again, the right atrium, left atrium. All right, you may have one that fires from up here in the sinus node, but you may have one here, one firing here, 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 and eventually, right, all kind of going to that AV node causing different P wave morphologies and different PR intervals, all right? But once it gets through, once they get to that AV node and to the His bundle and down through the bundle branches and the fascicles, everything happening down here is the same. And that's why the QRS complexes and the T waves look similarly, okay? So probably more than you wanted to know, but hopefully that makes sense, all right? So again, the best choice here is MAT or multifocal atrial tachycardia, okay? And that's one thing just to keep in mind, often seen with patients that have any pulmonary disease. And the best thing for that is tend to treat the underlying condition and this tends to resolve. All right, well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.